Hi friends, welcome to lesson four of our Science as a Verb unit. We're going to talk here about rounding and how to use various rounding rules, kind of special rounding rules for the purpose of dealing with numbers with different amounts of precision or significant figures. If you haven't watched our significant figure discussion, you probably want to do that first before we have this conversation. Otherwise, it might seem a little bit strange to you. By the way, these are donuts simply for the fact that they're round. See? Cool. Let's go. So I, I know you, you totally understand rounding. You've known it since you were eight years old and I get that. I'm not talking about this kind of rounding. I'm really just talking about the kinds of special rules that we need to use here in chemistry to deal with numbers when they have different numbers of significant figures or different amounts of precision. When we deal with those numbers and we start using them in calculations, we're going to have to change our answer depending upon certain rules. And so that's what we're going to talk about. Real quick here, you can see this list of numbers and the places that they occupy. We're going to use those when we talk about various degrees of precision. So it's a good idea to get a handle on these. Again, there's really nothing here that you haven't been exposed to for many years at this point. All right, so let's dive in. The first thing that you should understand is that when you add or subtract two different numbers with different amounts of precision, your overall answer can only be precise as your least precise term. This really probably does make sense to you if you think about it, because here in chemistry, we're going to be dealing with a variety of units and measurements, which have often been taken to different amounts of precision. And so if we have one number that's more precise than another number, we can really only know with certainty to the least precise place that we have information for. So just as a reminder, here's a chart from page nine, and you can see the rounding of different numbers to particular degrees of precision. Take a moment and look at it. Certainly, if you have any questions, write them down. And when you're ready, let's go in and take a look. Let's look at some addition and subtraction examples from page nine in our unit one packet. Here we have three numbers, and the first thing that we're gonna do is just add them all together. So when we do this, we're gonna get 42.357 centimeters. But now remember the rule. Our answer can only be as precise as our least precise term. If we look at the precision of each of our terms, we can see that that first term is precise to the tenths. That's the least precision that we have. So our answer should only be recorded to the tenths place. When we do that, we're going to wind up rounding up from 42.3 to 42.4. I bet the reason for this is pretty obvious. We have a five in the hundreds place. So the best answer we can put down for this is 42.4 centimeters. Here's a subtraction example. Take a moment and pause the video and try this on your own and then compare with me and see if you got the same answer I did. So when we do this, we're just gonna do the subtraction first and not even worry about the rounding. And so our answer is going to come out to be 6,621.3 milliliters. But now we're gonna use those same rules. Our first term is only precise to the hundreds place. And so our answer can only be precise to the hundreds place. So when we wind up rounding off, we're gonna wind up with 6,600 milliliters as our best, most appropriate answer. When we do multiplication and division, it works a little bit differently. The rule here is going to be that our answer can only have as many significant figures as the fewest significant figures in our terms. This has to do with the way that multiplication and division work. We can't use the same precision rules that we use for addition and subtraction because of the way that numbers interact with each other when we multiply and divide them. Here's a chart from page 10 of your unit one packet that shows different numbers rounded to different numbers of significant figures, just to give you a little bit of practice. Take a moment and look, and when you're ready, let's move on and look at some examples. Let's look at some multiplication and division examples from our unit packet. These are on page 10. In the first one, we're gonna multiply 67.23 centimeters by 9.22 centimeters. We're just gonna do the math first. We're gonna wind up with 619.584 centimeters squared. At least that's what came out of my calculator. One thing that might be somewhat confusing to you right now is why centimeters times centimeters gives us centimeters squared. We can talk about that in class if you want, or we'll talk about converting between units a little bit later on in this course. But for right now, just understand that just like A times A is A squared, centimeters times centimeters is going to be squared centimeters. Now let's look at the number of significant figures in our terms. Our first term has four significant figures and our second term has three significant figures. This means that our answer can only have three significant figures. That's going to be the six, the one, and the nine, but if you look next door to the nine, we've got a five. So that means that we're going to have to round up. And so the best answer that we can record for this is 620 centimeters squared with that zero being indicated as significant. There are, of course, two ways to do this, as we talked about back when we talked about significant figure rules. We can either put the decimal point after the zero, or we can put the line over the zero to indicate that we do know that that is a zero with certainty. In problem B, we're going to do a division. Take a moment and try it on your own. And then when you're ready, let's move on and we'll look at how we did this. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually do the division. And so 30.0 grams divided by 3.0 milliliters is going to be 10 grams per milliliter. Once I do that, I'm going to look at the number of significant figures in each of my terms. My first term has three and my second term has two. So two significant figures is going to dictate the overall number of significant figures I can have in my answer. You might think that we're good right now, but remember that the way that 10 is currently written indicates that we do not know that zero with any certainty. It's just a placeholder. So there are again, two ways to show that we do know that zero with certainty. We can either put a decimal point after it, or we can put a line over it to indicate that it is in fact a significant zero. I hope that these made sense. If they don't make sense, take a moment and write down any questions that you have, and please make sure to bring them to class with you so that we can discuss them further. Here's the way I always want you to deal with these problems. I always want you just to do the math first. That's what we did in these practice problems. Then I want you to look at the terms to figure out what needs to happen. And then I'd like you to round accordingly as you may need, depending upon the relationships among your terms. Thanks so much for watching this. I really appreciate it. Let's make sure that you can do the following things here at the end of this discussion. Make sure that you can determine the precision of a term and the number of significant figures in that term. Also, please make sure that you can use the appropriate rounding rules for the four basic arithmetical operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. That's really all that I want you to be able to do after watching this video. If you have any questions, please make sure to get your answers either by bringing them to class or if you can leave a comment in the comment field below this video or get in touch with me through the contact information in the info field. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you again. Take it easy.